there and welcome to this month's edition of In The Labs with me, Becky. Uh, we're going to show you how to create this hanging planter. So let's take a look at the build. So when I'm creating stuff together projects, when I get towards the end of the design where I'm finalised and everything, I like to create prototypes. So I make smaller versions and I cut them out in the laser just so I can see how everything goes together. Is there anything I can make better? Are there any flaws in the design? So that's exactly what I've done here. So I've got some three millimeter acrylic and I've got my two main parts. So this forms the frame of the hanger. So the idea is that's going to slot into here and then that will slot into the top up there and that will be uh, the frame. Now I really like the shape of the frame. We've got a kind of pendant uh, crystal diamond look to it. So I'm happy with that. Uh, one thing that I do notice is that at the bottom here, you can see that it is very flimsy. Um, and I know that that is due to the nature of this material as it's so thin. Um, but what I want to do for my final design is put in tracks so that these flimsy parts will have walls next to them so they can't move so that's something I need to go and alter in my file another thing I'd like to do is give this a flat top so I can easily put a screw hook in ready to hang uh, then I have my third piece so this is a square diamond whichever way you're looking at it it's got a hole in the center based on the medium diameter of the pots that I plan to use and we've got slots in the corner and we're just going to feed that through into the center of the hanger and then just simply slot that in place uh, so it will look something like this um, and that would be the finished product. So I'm going to go and alter the file. So let's take a look at that in the software. So let's go and open an existing file. So we've got the hangingplanter.crv. Now this file can be opened in Cut2D, VCarve and Aspire. So here I'm just going to go over some of the key uh, bits of information for you for this particular file. So first off, uh, the material thickness that I'm using is 0.492 inches and that value will be reflected in terms of the slot widths that will be created in this design. I'm working with a two-sided part as I need to create cuts on both sides to complete uh, that part. So um, in terms of the actual design itself, I have uh, part A, I've got part B here, this kind of diamond pendant shape. Part A will slot in to part B, they'll meet at the top uh, to create the full assembled shape. And then part C, which is this part here, so this will have a hole inside uh, to hold my plant part. And then this will simply slot in somewhere around here. Okay, so the idea is that this part is going to slot into here and meet up at the top. Um, so if I go to my layers bar, uh, I can see I have a layer here called track vectors. If I switch that on and then just click into the white space, you can see I've got these blue rectangles. And so the idea here is that uh, this slot that we've got there, the width of that slot is the same as our material thickness. That's going to slot into this part here. But we can see that this part is actually uh, much thinner than this slot here and the reason for that is I'm creating these tracks like I mentioned earlier uh, when we we're talking about the prototype if I create these tracks um, I can basically have a kind of lock in place for these two sides so they, they're not flimsy they're not going to move around they're going to be locked in place into the track so the track is just these rectangles here and here and I'm simply going to pocket down uh, 0.1 of an inch okay so my material thickness is 0.492 so 0.1 of an inch on both sides you can see I've got the track on the other side also means that it will I will have a total thickness of 0.292 and if I use the measure tool and just measure the distance between there and there you'll see we've got a distance of 0.292 so the part should be flush uh, when we slot the two parts together. 
Okay, so you'll see I have three circles here. They represent the dowels. So I've measured the diameter of my dowels, uh, drew the circles, randomly positioned them in an asymmetric fashion. Uh, and these are going to be used uh, in order for me to align the X and Y values when I come to flip the material over to cut the bottom side. Okay, so you'll see that I have copied those dowel vectors to the bottom side. So here they are there. And so the idea is on the top side we're just going to drill those holes uh, just partially through the material uh, and then on the bottom side when we take the material off after we've cut the top side we're going to cut those holes into our spoil board so then we can line the uh, top side to the holes that we're going to drill into the spoil board of the bottom side and then everything should match up Right then, so that's pretty much that. Um, let's just have a look through some of the layers. So I've created various layers here just to help you if you're wanting to uh, cut your own and you're using different size material or things like your pot size is actually different. Um, so here what I've done is I measured out my pot. So I measured the largest diameter which is 4.35 inches, the smallest which is 3.35 and so I just kind of got the medium value from these two numbers which is 3.85 which enabled me to draw uh, this circle here and transfer it into my design uh, where we'd cut all the way through and that's what the pot will slot into uh, and because it's the medium diameter it's not going to fall through, it's going to hold nicely in place. Let's really just undraw that layer. Okay, so here I've got a layer here called part labeling. Okay, so this is just to tell you this one here on the left is the one with the track, the one on the right is the one with the slots. If we undraw that one and switch on original vectors for alteration, we've got two layers of that there. Switch those off and we'll just have a look at some of the things uh, we should really um, take a look at if we was to cut this ourselves using um, a different material thickness. So, as I mentioned about the plant pot, so it's a circle that you'll need to change uh, to have the medium diameter of your plant pot. Uh, in terms of the material thickness, the parts you'll need to change are the slots uh, of the actual plant pot holder, uh, and also the slots for the tracks and uh, the actual slot for the cutout here and it's all labelled so you just need to alter the width of those uh, to match that of your own material thickness. Over to this side you want to change the slot uh, width to accommodate the actual track that you're cutting on this part here. So that's all down to the actual thickness that's going to be left over. Okay, So you want to make sure that uh, matches uh, up so you can work out what distance to leave here and in this slot here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So we'll quickly look at uh, the toolpaths for this. We're going to switch over to the toolpaths tab. So in terms of material setup, I'm going to set Z0 to the material surface. X0, Y0 will be in the lower left hand corner. So the first toolpath I'm going to run is the profile for the tracked part. So that's this part here. If I double click on that, you can see I'm going to cut all the way through my material. I'm using a quarter inch compression cutter. So that's going to have upward and downward cutting force. Um, here I've edited my passes to accommodate uh, the fact that I am using a compression cutter. So the upward part uh, of the tool, which is at the bottom, um, I'm going to make sure that I go in at my first pass uh, just above there so I don't have upward for upward cutting force. Uh, so I'm going to set my first pass to be 0.2 and thereafter it's just going to um, cut that uh, at the specified depths that we've got there. Um, I'm going to machine outside of those vectors. Uh, I'm going to add tabs to that toolpath. I've got my tabs in place. You can see those with the yellow T squares. Uh, if you wanted to remove these or edit them, move them around, just go to Edit Tabs to do that. 
I'm going to ramp into my uh, toolpath using a smooth ramp uh, which we're actually going to use a circular lead also I just want to keep that tool away from uh, my finished surface um, as it plunges into the material there and then um, that's pretty much that if I just go ahead and tile the windows we could just go ahead and just preview that so that's what that part would look like um, then I've got another toolpath here profile slot part and square okay so it's pretty much everything else and the reason why I've kept this separate from this piece is because I wanted to apply a negative um, allowance here so I'm overcutting as with all slots together parts uh, you want to do test cuts and I've done this quite a few times now that I know that uh, this value works best for me um, so I'm just overcutting here to ensure that this can slot together nicely uh, pretty much the same settings as we did previously in here and if we go ahead and preview that we can see how that looks then we've got a toolpath here called Pocket Track using down cutter. So I'm just going to do a tool change here. I'm using the same quarter inch end mill except I'm just using a downward cutter uh, as I'm only creating pockets so I don't want to be lifting up um, the top layers uh, of my plywood. I want all that uh, force going down. Uh, so here we are cutting down at point one so this is for the tracks it's going to go here and here uh, just going to do that in a raster clear out and so if I go ahead and preview that we can see that that's done that there for us we've got those tracks in place so this part should fit nice and snug into that track uh, then we've got pocket circle the downward cutter so just doing a simple uh, pocket toolpath on that circle there and then we're going to profile the dowels um, in here so if we double click on that again we're using a quarter inch end mill machine in the inside those circles and we're just going to do a spiral ramp on that uh, to do that toolpath and then we can simply close out and we'll just take a look at those so you can see um, the actual spiral ramp here I just zoom out so that's how the part is going to approach our material right then so that's the top side so at this point we'd say out the toolpath so take run all the files um, and then we're going to take this material off of our uh, machine bed and we're going to look at the bottom side so our first operation is to machine the dowel holes of the bottom side directly into the spoil board and so what I'm going to do for this side is set my Z0 to be on the machine bed uh, so in here I'm going to put my start depth as my material thickness as that actually won't be there um, so we will need to accommodate uh, that thickness there for our start depth and then cut depth we're going to put value of 0.45 using a quarter inch end mill on the inside and again we're going to spiral ramp in there and if we go ahead and preview uh, this toolpath we can see that it's going to actually come down past the material thickness and then it's going to start spiraling in to our spoil board uh, and then finally we can then um, locate the top side of our material to the dowel holes um, of the spoil board uh, and peg everything in place and now we have perfect alignment and then all I need to do is just run the track for the bottom side uh, like so and if we maximize that that is my finished file okay so at this stage what we do then is to simply go out and save uh, each one of those toolpaths and run that on the machine so let's go over to the labs so we're in the labs i've gathered all of the material that i need to use so starting off we've got our plywood so that is 0.492 inch thick plywood that we're using there i've got my two tools so we are using a uh, quarter inch end mill the only difference between the two tools as i said in the software is one a tool is going to be a compression cutter so that has both upward and downward 
cutting force. Um, so that's what, what we're going to use to cut all the way through the material. And then we have a standard downward cutter, so that's going to cut at uh, the pocketed parts. Got my three dowels in place, um, so that's ready for us to uh, use when we come to flip the material over. I've got some screws, I've got a drill and a screwdriver for hold down purposes. Uh, so let's get everything set up. Okay, so we've cut the three main shapes. Um, one thing that has just occurred to me is that I'm able to actually see the inside of the shapes now. And what I could do is, to really help myself with the cleanup, is screw uh, some screws into the inside parts and then look at running another pass. I'm gonna have to go back into the software and I'm gonna just simply take the inside shapes, so we might have to doctor some of those vectors, uh, whereby I'm going to run another profile pass inside, uh, but we're, gonna, we're not going to have tabs, it's going to cut those tabs that I've already put in place, um, and that's just going to help me to really minimise the amount of cleanup that I'm going to have to do on the inside parts. So I'm going to go and edit that file uh, and then we're going to run uh, that toolpath to remove those tabs that were originally in place to hold uh, the whole part together. Okay, so now we've pretty much cut the top side. Uh, one thing we should do for good measure is to check that our dowels fit into those dowel holes. If they don't, we can at this stage go back in and just make them bigger if we needed to. These uh, are all perfect, so I don't need to do anything there. Uh, as I am using a whole sheet here, I'm actually going to create uh, one more tool path that will just literally cut. Uh, our part out. So I need to screw uh, some screws in place to hold it down to my spore board. I'm literally just going to cut all the way through, create a shape around the outside uh, so that then I can easily flip that over rather than flipping the whole sheet. Okay, so I've removed uh, the sheet, I don't need that anymore, I've just got the part that I want to work with. 
Um, and so for the next stage, uh, what we need to do is we need to run the dowel holes for the bottom side of our file and we're going to put those dowel holes directly into our spoil board. Once we've done that we can then put these dowel pins in place and then we simply just flip our material over, locate them to the holes and then we're ready to run uh, the last uh, toolpath which is the track on the bottom side. Right then, so uh, we're going to do that, so we need to uh, remember to set our Z0 to uh, the spoil board as that's what I've got it set up in the file, so we'll go do that and run the file. Okay, so now that we've got the holes in the spoil board, I can take the dowels and I can just simply position those to the top side. You could put this in the spoil board, whatever way uh, you want to work with, I guess. Uh, and then we're literally just going to locate uh, those holes in the spoil board and then just firmly put that in place. Uh, and now that that's all located, all I need to do now is screw uh, the part down uh, to hold everything in place. So here is the finished hanging planter, put a chain in there ready to hang, pot sat snug in the holder uh, and the structure overall is very rigid and that's thanks to those tracks that we put in. So all we have to do now is hang the part up. So you want to find a hanging bracket uh, in order for you to hang that up. Now, if you want to have a go at trying this project out, then you just need to head over to release.vetric.com where you can download the files for this project from there. This is also a bonus free trial project, so if you've not yet got our software, you can download free trial software to cut this out on your CNC machine. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed to our channel, then please subscribe for instant updates on new videos that we're releasing. So thank you for watching and happy making.